Welcome to The Report. This series covers topics and concerns of lore that have direct influence on the gameplay of Star Citizen. Today, I will be talking about Imperator Addison's first historic days in office. We'll start with a retrospective on who the Imperator is. Then, we'll talk about her first month in office. Finally, we'll discuss the impact her administration might have on the game itself in the coming months and years. Last year, the citizens elected the independent candidate Leilani Addison as the next Imperator. She won on her platform of higher funding for science and education and restarting research into artificial intelligence, a topic which has been all but banned for the last few centuries. She was an incredibly popular candidate, winning over 45% of the vote between the final five candidates. Public trust and confidence has been high since her inauguration on the 1st of January, 2951. She started out with some strong steps, but also discovered that the ship of state requires help to steer, fumbling and already tempering some of her rhetoric. Her first days did not start out well. There was an embarrassing scandal involving the guest list at her inauguration. Then there was the weak applause of the Senate during her first speech before the assembly. And finally, having to pull the nomination of Marianne Althroff to be Undersecretary of the Department of Transportation and Navigation, after several unflattering comments by Althroff about high-ranking members of the UEE High Command came to light, adding to the already long list of unfilled positions in the administration. She's been forced to tone down her language, and conceding that while she still wishes to increase funding for science and education, it would have to go through the Senate. In fact, a prominent centrist on the Budgetary Committee, Walter Fisk, has lambasted the Imperator, saying that her proposal was economically ignorant and a grave threat to the fiscal future of the Empire. This was also a concern of mine during her campaign, as she was promising many things but not detailing on how they would pay for it, a concern many in the Senate seem to feel at the moment. With her status as an outsider, the Senate seems to be closing ranks, with few members of the three main parties willing to work with her. However, there are some reports that her staff has been throwing out some wisdom that was given to the first modern Imperator, Aaron Toy, by her chief of staff, Clement Redfield. It goes, campaign on the dream, but govern to the reality. It is said that this bit of wisdom was what kept the UEE together during those first tumultuous years after the fall of the Mezers, tempering Imperator Toy's ambitions for a kinder and gentler humanity with the political reality of an empire teetering on the break of civil war. Imperator Addison seems to be heeding that advice, looking to govern smartly, but also to know her limits. She started with a brilliant maneuver to keep her promise to start reducing restrictions on AI on day one citing an obscure bit of legal standing which allowed the Imperator to bring any old legislation to the floor of the Senate for review if it had not been on the docket for longer than 25 years. Now, this move bypassed the Committee on Science and Technology, where her reforms would have been slow-walked or killed outright, as the Committee would be unlikely to pass any new legislation on AI research proposed by the Imperator at that time. This move allowed for amendments to the law to be voted on by the entire Senate, speeding up the reform process. While this excited her supporters, the new Imperator temper expectations in a speech where she would explain it would take years for new permits to be issued. She's also managed a few big wins, adding to her success with AI reform. Addison has created a brand new Xenoscience Conference, which is to be held in New York later this year, and will host human, Banu, Jian, and Tavaran scientists in a cross-species exchange of knowledge. She also installed the first ever Tavaran cabinet member, Ki Jotal. The mixed results of her first few days in office show that while Imperator Addison is settling into her new position, she still has a lot to go before she starts seeing serious political gains. The lack of a party means that she will have to rely on citizen supporters to pressure their senators into supporting her bills and mobilize like-minded senators into a coalition. Her appointment of the Tavarin seems to be directed at Senator Suj Kosi, the first Tavarin senator, and Mira Nago, her former competitor for the Imperatorship, who had proposed a Tavarin Affirmative Action Initiative to get more of the species into the UEE government. Her creation of the Xeno Science Conference also seems to be a move to try to appease the Universalists, who have been trying to open free trade between humanity and other species like the Xi'an, and the Transits, 
who have been advocating for closer ties with our alien neighbors. Public confidence in the new Imperator remains high, with one supporter saying, I quote, I hope she can accomplish what she promised, but I'm sure there'll be some snags. Even if she gets half of it done, this empire will be headed in the right direction, and I'll be happy. She capped off this week with a speech at the auditorium of her former secondary school in Braha, the city of her birth, in the Oya system. There, she was met with wild applause. She smiled warmly and thanked the crowd for their patience, saying, My day's been a bit more hectic than expected. A statement which seems to encapsulate the first month of her office for the new Imperator. So, now the question is, how might this affect us in-game in the coming months and years? Well, let's start with some context. It's important to remember that, although for now, the storytelling is restricted to the website, with events like the Xenothreat invasion of the Stanton system coming in 2021, we are likely to get more and more events throughout the coming months and years. These events will likely have their origins firmly in the larger political and economic lore of the UEE in the 30th century. Thus, it's important for us to be able to analyze and understand the current events of the UEE outside of our little bubble of the Stanton system. As for how this might affect the game itself, the inclusion of the Tavarn into government positions, coupled with the new interest in a cross-species science exchange, may signal more alien access to the market. Thus, more exotic commodities, weapons, armor, and ships may start to make their way into the game. These actions also are sure to enrage the conspiracy-driven xenophobic minority in the UEE. They will likely be galvanized by the attacks on Stanton by Xenothreat and begin targeting government actions and events sponsored by Addison, who will likely become their prime target, like Imperator Costigan was before her during his negotiation of the Huxa Treaty. So, in summary, it seems we're in for some more exotics showing up in the verse, and a very unstable UEE, with insurgent actions popping up all over the Empire. So it seems it will be a very profitable and fun time to be a lover of alien tech or a mercenary. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank my patrons on screen now for helping me make this content. What do you think about Addison's first month in office? Do you think we'll see more ripple effects in the game in the near future? Let me know what you think and more down below in the comments, and remember, Exhistoria at Astra.